اعوذ باللہ من الشیطان الرجیم بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم محمد و نسلی اللہ رسول الکریم سنس لاسٹ ویک وی آر ڈسکسنگ سرٹن آسپیکٹس آف آلٹرنیٹ ڈسپیوٹ ریزولوشن میکینزم دیٹ از ان فیکٹ آلٹرنیٹ ٹو لٹی اینڈ پرٹیکولرلی دی کاؤنسلنگ پارٹ آف اٹ از ناٹ اونلی uh saving the uh, parties from going for litigation but in fact uh correcting the situation and uh, creating an environment within the family where they can live peacefully in harmony and if i can put it in uh, the words of dr jasim pasha he has coined a phrase that psycho bio harmony so i think uh, uh, this i borrow these words these words from him that's in fact is an attempt at psycho bio harmony last time i had just pointed out towards uh, these points which i have now presented before you in this slide and then i left it here apparently it may appear to be a very small slide uh, but i think it is the foundation of uh, the counseling matter uh, and it needs uh, some elaboration uh, a bit uh, in detail last time i had mentioned that uh, when the parties come the first task is to make them agree bring them to a point somehow to agree to listen to each other just listen because when they come sometimes the parties are so angry that they would not even like to listen to each other they said just we want to separate so first task is to get them to sit down and listen just listen to each other so anyway when those uh, uh, processes are crossed those steps are crossed we are discuss all other things now we have come to the point where the session is going to finish which i said already been couple of hours sometimes uh, last time last week now uh, it took about uh, i think 6 hours and uh, then uh, uh, the, uh, we had to uh, break it and then we met next time re establish communication and in that regard i had submitted that is very important to seek sincere commitment not just uh, um, an ordinary communication and along with care compassion respect as a uh, uh, positive approach but for that there is a protocol which has to be understood is not i don't have any influence on them for example if i say tell them that you communicate with each other or you say assalam alaikum to each other it's not that they are going to do that they because sometimes they plainly refuse <clears> the <throat> no i just don't want to look at her ugly face and uh, he or she Uh, is all the time uh, bickering all the time uh, i mean fighting uh, but anyhow we just want to uh, de separate so i'll just uh, point out some of the important uh, uh, i will uh, discuss some of the important points in this regard that during the day or uh, when they uh, go to sleep or at home and workplace or coming home or going out what has to be done for example they sometimes say that okay i'll say hi i will say bye but my effort is always to bring them to the point that they say assalam alaikum and they say fi aman allah so they say allah hafiz instead of just saying hi or bye it may have it has a good gesture hi is good gesture bye is good gesture is very good no no problem but there is a specific reason that i try to explain to them and sometimes it takes uh, a lot of time to uh, inculcate this uh, habit in them when we say assalam alaikum it is not just hi when we say assalam alaikum we are giving dua and when we are going giving dua it is not just that we are giving dua but we are expecting also there is a prescription in the quran and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that if somebody says greets you you have to greet in return in a better way so if you are giving a dua then you are in fact seeking a better dua 
it has to be there after namaz when we say assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah uh, north and south when we say this what does that mean if there are 20 persons and all the 20 persons are saying assalamu alaikum assalamu alaikum that means assalamu alayna it means that all of them are saying that there be peace upon us when the prophet peace be upon him according to the narrations as the details have been discussed when for when for maraj in the atayyat we say assalamu alayna wa ala ibadillah salihin this is the dialogue of the prophet with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he says assalamu alayna so when we say assalamu alaykum and there is an ordainment of god that he has to return it in a better way that we are in fact expecting assalamu alayna and when we say assalamu alaykum for example wife is saying assalamu alaykum to the husband or husband in saying saying assalamu alaykum he is including in this plural assalamu alaykum everybody in the household children also everybody in the household is including is included the entire house and all the belongings are included the both the members because the entire the, both the, the couple is included so it is when they come to understand that what is the importance of assalamu alaikum you are in fact making god allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you are addressing allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that his i am seeking his salamati on you therefore it is very important for the couple to understand the meaning of this greeting when they enter home and at other place also allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling in the quran that whenever you go to your relations we had discussed that i the last time to your relations when you enter their house send salam to them when we can we are being asked to send salam to friends to relations to anybody else when we are visiting them or we are meeting them then why not on the spouse and in the this assalamu alaikum everybody of the household is included and in return even if we don't get the words back allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and we will discuss this ayat inshallah uh, in the coming weeks uh, it is one of the ayat where allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that i'll take your account there is accountability for not saying assalamu alaikum and for not returning particularly not returning the assalam there is an ayat i'll show you we'll discuss that and there is hisab for that so when you say assalamu alaikum to your spouse you are expecting a similar thing from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala even if it is not returned it is returned by allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and he is taking account he is writing something in your book for you he is sending because salamati is from him it is not from a person it is from allah subhanahu wa ta'ala both of them are making dua to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and for similarly fi amanullah i am not going to that detail i think this just one explanation is enough but one point at this time is important to know and you might be knowing about that hadith also that the couple which is angry a spouse who is angry and they go to bed whole night the malaika sent curse on that house on that family on that couple on the people on that person particularly one of these spouses whether a wife or whoever he is is angry there is a curse on her or on the him or anybody the whole night here we have to understand it's all scientific what does this mean that malaika sent the curse what is the meaning of malaika malaika are the forces of nature allah so here this hadith is telling that when you are angry the forces of nature curse you and what are the forces of nature the science now tells us the and quran also tells us quran says there is an ayat that when you are angry you perish 
you perish under your own anger. Now the science tells us that when you are angry, you are every cell of the body, every molecule of the body perishes. It is under stress. If you are depressed, every living cell, it's a living organism. However, we have a living body and every cell in the body is living. When one is angry himself, all his cells are angry. All his cells are depressed. If the boss is angry or the boss is depressed, all those people working in that workplace, they feel it and they think, they know that today the boss is angry and they are in, under anxiety, under pressure. This is the position with the human body. When the any member of the family goes at night to bed angry, not only he is perishing himself under the forces of nature, which are working in every cell of the body. These are malaika. Malaika are the robots. Malaika are the softwares of nature. These are the softwares of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the robots of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. These are the dunu. These are the forces of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malaika is a general term. Energic forces. Malaika means the energetic forces. And those energetic forces, those nature forces of nature, we are inviting ourselves to send curse. Sending curses that if I'm angry, my cells are angry. My kidneys are angry. My liver is angry. My stomach is angry. My stomach is upset. We say that. My heart is upset. My brain is upset. So kindly this is avoid this one element in your interrelationship, particularly the spousal relationship, in the parental relationship, in the family relationship. If you avoid this thing, and the one of the best ways to avoid this thing, to rancor, to take out the rancor from the hearts is that you smile with each other. You say assalamu alaikum to each other. You say fi amanullah to each other. And the best timings are if you can't do it otherwise. When you go to bed, must say fi amanullah, must say Allah Hafiz. Even if you are angry otherwise. Even if you can't otherwise control your feelings, but for the sake of God, we had started that we are, and this is also to be inculcated into the mind of the couple. It is, I try my best that you, we are, we believe in God. God is the creator. He created us. He created all creation, creations, and he created the relationships. He created relationships, our relationships with the environment. I have some relationship with the environment. I have relationship with the wind. I have relationship with the with water. Among human beings, I have certain relationships, parental relationships, family relationships. We are all related. It's one family. And in that relationship, we have to maintain certain norms. And these are very small things that we do lilla. We are, we are his creatures, he has created relations, and even if somebody is angry with me, and if I'm sending salam to him, I'm doing it little long. Then don't worry, even if it is not written. I'm sending it for Lilla, and Allah says I'm recording, Allah says I'm taking his heart, I have noted it, I will discuss that ayah, and when you come to me, I'll give you the reward. So don't worry if the one of the members of the spouse of uh, the family, even if he goes wrong and doesn't reply, don't worry. You are getting reward, you are getting credit. And the right on the day of judgment, in another ayat, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that whosoever gets the credits, credits on the right side, on the right hand, he'll go to heaven. And those who get credits, that is debits on the left side, who are in loss, they will go to hell. So why not earn these points on the credit side, on the right side, so that we get the account with the balance on the right hand. So these are some of the points. When, here I'm trying to be, uh, go, uh, to be very brief, but when they discuss this, I try to inculcate the model. I've shown you that, I'll, we'll come to that point also. The model of the family, then the architecture of the family, and now this point, 
the maintenance of the family, how to maintain the spousal relationships. It takes some time that once it is inculcated in them, they sometimes give the feedback. Now, we are, we, even if there is a disagreement and disagreements will be there, it's normal, but we reconcile. And this, this particularly uh, prescription is keeping us, bringing us back every day, every night as friends. You don't, uh, I mean, take the word on the face of it. Here's a, here are, there are some studies before you, Harvard University, California University, and University of Miami. They found medical, medical schools, not only ordinary schools, they have found in their studies and positive psychology, psychology research that Gratitude, being grateful to God, gratitude I, is very important. And one of the extension of this attribute is that somebody is he, if he is not great, if he is not grateful, grateful to the immediate relations, to the friends, to the family, to the human beings, then how he can be grateful to God? We, we ignore, we take it for granted that the wife has for, uh, cooked food for me. I take it for granted. I, I've never uh, uh, thanked her. Do we every day thank the wife for the food when we come home and she has already prepared and made it ready and she offers it and she has laid it on the, she has laid the table. The universities have found that being grateful Gratitude, show, you show gratitude to be strongly and consistently associated with greater happiness. If you are not grateful to each other in the family, you are angry, it means. It means you are not happy. Simple. And there is one thing more. As I said, I take it for granted. When I get food in the home, when I get, get my clothes in the home, when I get everything in my home, my husband brings, I get it, uh, if the husband brings and the wife takes it for granted. Now he is prescribing, the, these studies are prescribing. They are trying to inculcate some habit, I'll show that. Have we ever listed, made a list of these favors of the spouse? If we make the list, can we make that list? Although it's a very small list as compared to what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you cannot count my name up. You can't list it. Although in that comparison, a very, very small thing, but I think if we sit down and count the favors of each other, we can't complete the entire list. Now let us see what the studies show. In, in, in other studies, in other institutions, an organization has developed a happy notes, a book for happy notes, in order to inculcate a habit among the people so that when they simply, for example, say thank you, they show some gratitude, but they don't know all the favors. So they give the book, say, for 10 days. Um, uh, the studies they have conducted with the people and they try to inculcate this habit, they give them the book for 10 days that you write down every day. I got up in the morning, my wife, my wife gave me a broad smile and the whole day how I felt, how it lingered on my mind, how my children hugged me and how it lingered on my mind. You would simply write down, simply note the points every day. And even at the end of the day, you will find, oh, I missed something more. I, there, there was something more happy, uh, happy for me. The Happy Notes book is designed to inculcate a daily gratitude habit. Have you ever done it for God? Through Happy Notes, anything happy uh, uh, of happiness which has happened to you. This is called gratitude practice. They call it gratitude practice just for 10 days 
and they say that then it is inculcated in the mind that every day when you get up you feel happy for each other you feel grateful to each other you feel happy gratitude practice helps improve mood to make a happier person these are the findings and concept of happy notes is simple every day any moment of happiness which has been extended to you or has been created for you or it has happened for you from any member of your family just note down and you will find at the end of the day that they are countless but we ignore them a daily gratitude practice primes your brain to scan for positive events each day another doctor says this and this is the name of the author a book nervous in nervous energy the concept is to train your brain to identify and appreciate the joy in daily life moments you go collect the hadis on this subject what the prophet used to do in the family in the interrelationships and what he prescribes you should do in the morning when you get up alhamdulillah and thankful to god for this life and then in the family the immediate person to you usually would be the wife or the husband or the children you smile at them you say assalamu alaikum you feel happy everything is available in the ahadith in we they are enough to inculcate but if it is not happening then we can adopt these practices just for 10 days if you can otherwise uh, there is a lot of literature in ahadith lot of instructions in ahadith now what are the impact what is the impact of this they have conducted studies on the uh, impact during the day and even after yeah imagine the first thing is the moment of joy you enjoy when somebody smiles at you as soon as you open your eyes the melodious voice of your spouse touches you carries you cares for you and makes uh, and smiles at you and you smile at him, him or her and makes you smile this is the starting point but matter does not end here the psychologists have found that the next is you feel excited excited for the things you look forward and particularly in the case of the spouses who are twin together in mawaddah love and they are encased in love so the smile or the voice does not stop there it creates an excitement you look forward at that time you are in a hurry you go to office you go to work but it is at the back of your mind it is prompting for something else here people say that i have not we have not touched each other for 25 years they have not touched the touched each other for 2 years or 3 years or 5 years because this is not happening we when we we will come back to this point when when we did discuss the model we are not training our brain we are on the contrary training our brain negatively so that we can live apart we can live separately we can live angrily away from each other these things bring us back when the beloved smiles at you talks to you nicely you return you come back this primes your brain to recognize and focus on happy moments to come again lovely dinner for example you will like that now you are feeling so happy your life had life had said would for the office allah office you are in the office now you are waiting for the moment to return home and see the same smile hear the same voice have a dinner with the family with the children with wife and so on and the last you understand well things would not stop there you are living in a you are carrying a electromagnetic field and this both these pulses are carrying electromagnetic field both of them have attraction they are living in the magnetic fields 
psychological, physical, physiological. Now all these things are together to bring them back to accomplish intentions which have been building up all the day, all the time. For days ahead, for the time ahead, for the night ahead, like focusing on non-work, these are their words, for the non-work related engagements, it's not only the engagement of work with the spouse, that she prepares food or you work for you earn money. It is not a work related relationship only. It prepares for the non-work related engagements with wife, with family and so on. These are the benefits of Assalamu Alaikum in the morning, fasting after prayer to God. And these are the benefits of Fi Aman Allah. When you say Fi Aman Allah, so this is totally different from high and by. When the couple understands this and when they agree themselves that yes, yes, we, we would like that we bless each other. We would like blessings of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we promise we'll say assalamu alaikum, we'll say fi aman Allah and this is doing miracles. This is very important to make them understand themselves since then they'll do it on their own. Based on the energy, uh, this, I mean, these such studies, focusing on the plain and essential points of gratitude can be more impactful. It's not such just saying thank you. But for, uh, focusing on the essential points of gratitude, you have enjoyed the food. Food is not simply enough to say thank you. Not enough. If you want deeper relationship, you have to say the taste is very good. Today, the spices are very good. Today, it has been well cooked. It is well done. Something, something, add something to it. Add additional gesture of love to it. These are smaller things, but we ignore these things. That is why we have to explain this, these things. And once you focus on the essential points, that why are you saying thank you? Thank you because of these things. And people are happy, particularly women feel happy when they are praised. We get what we focus on. If we focus on something, then it expands. How it expands? If you praise that food is good, next time you might get two dishes. You might get a better dish and things go on. Being grateful allows your subconscious, your mind to shift into a new homeostasis and attract more success, health, love and abundance. This is what barakat are. You read Quran and you understand this word. What are the barakat? Things multiply. You focus on one thing. You focus on the gratitude of God. And Allah said, Yazid, I increase it. He increases it. Yazid. These are simple things which are already given in Quran and all these, but we are forgotten. And these studies are reminding us if we can't find it, in, I mean, if we can't find time to read Quran or all these, then let us see this. They are bringing, bringing us back. Go and find in Quran, find in Hadith. These are the barakah. Practicing gratitude has the exponential impact. It multiplies many times. When shared with someone else, when you have a gratitude in mind, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, you come to me, you talk to me. When you want to talk to Allah, go into prayer. If you want to listen to God, read his book. His message. So here, when you share the gratitude, it increases. And here the psychologists find this. And Quran says this, Yazid, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if you do shukr, I'll increase it. You read those ayah. You never know how one simple kindness can make someone day, someone's day. How the spouse feels happy, how the wife feels happy. When you leave her happy, and go to work. There are instances here, people when they come 
when they talk they start talking when they agree to listen and they start talking sometimes they complain for example one of the spouses says i went to him or went to her and told him that uh, i have uh, a headache and instead of asking me talking to me or caressing or uh, uh, consoling me on the contrary he said that uh, uh, go to the doctor and i had to drive myself i had to go back to to bed and i could not sleep you must have heard the case of uh, son of zulfikar ali bhutto his son his youngest son who died in paris in in in, uh, in france his wife was charged she was tried she was sent to jail that at that night she did not help him when he was in pain this is criminal this is criminal if the spouse comes to to the other member of the family and tells him or her about the agony even if she is wrong or he is wrong you have to listen to it a hand written thank you note for example sometimes we send the text on the whatsapp sincere phone call or a kind text you you yourself know it reinforces relationship when you are when you are at work i advise them kindly you must make a telephone call at least one at least one to your spouse at home or when you are at home make a telephone call if you can't make the telephone call okay send a text message even if he is not able he she is not able to read at that time he will read, read it um, um, some other time and feel happy do something which adds a gesture of love look at this another study share gratitude with others why we all want to feel that we count the wife wants to be counted in the family today she is not counted as a family she is ignored she has no share in the decision making in most of the cases and we are talking about the umma of the entire entire muslim world go to the muslim countries and see how she is marginalized she is marginalized not only as a gender not only as wife she is not only as a woman she is marginalized as a wife she is marginalized as a mother she is marginalized as a sister they we, they all want to feel and they want to be counted because they feel they want that they matter like their lives matter we are raising slogans for others but not for our wife not for our women in the family they want to feel that they count and they matter their lives matter acknowledgement gives a sense of belonging when you acknowledge any favor of your spouse it is important psychologically important dr irwin says that is extremely important consoling touch i have mentioned that look at this list of the doctors all these doctors together have conducted a study research and they found this is the title with in the bracket and the inverted comma this is the long title of that study effects of hand holding on emotional pain when the, when the partner is in pain and you hold the hand you hug the pain may vanish or the longer lasting effects of pain vanish but if she has headache and if you ignore her if you don't sit with her if you don't hold her hand and you just tell her or tell him that you go on your own then you are creating you are hurting the emotions for whole life and that person that spouse will not allow you to come near if it is happening again and again we are losing our uh, relationships and look at these studies of these doctors holding a partner's hand 
while processing painful memories can weaken the lasting effects of emotional pain. Another study by Beth Elwood. Psychological pain lies at the heart of various mental health concerns. I am requesting you to kindly see in your own family. God forbid, God forbid, it should not be there. But someone, if has a problem with husband or wife, that she is or he is irritable, irritating all the time, angry all the time, not settled all the time. See what is at the back. There must be some reason connected with these hours. You find it yourself. And the stage comes where the spouses will not allow him or her to come near. And you look at these research by another, she's a Muslim lady, Razia Sahi, at the Ukla, University of California, Los Angeles, not ordinary universities. I think I stop here. I have already covered about 45 minutes, and this is another part. So, inshallah, we'll take up next week. Thank you very much. Subhan Arabic Arabil is at the Mayo Sakhon and Sabram and Alam Salim. Walham the Lila Hirabella Dami. Allahum Salli was Salim Mubarak Ali said, No Mohammed in Wala Ali or Sahbi. اللهم اهدنا في من هديت وعافنا في من عافيت وتولنا في من توليت وبارك اللهم لنا فيما أعطيت وقنا واصرف عنا شر ما قضيت فإنك يا ربنا تقضي بالحق ولا يقضى عليه اللهم ادخلنا برحمتك في عبادك الصالحين اللهم اخرجنا من ظلمات الجهل والوهم إلى نور العلم اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وانفعنا بما علمتنا وزدنا علما اللهم أرنا الحق حقا ورزقنا اتباعه وأرنا الباطل باطلا ورزقنا اجتنابه اللهم اجعلنا ممن يستمعون القول فيتبعون أحسنا اللهم اكفنا بحلالك عن حرامك وبطاعتك عن معصيتك وفضلك عن من سواك اللهم فضلك ورحمتك على كلمة الحق والدين اللهم انصر الإسلام وعز المسلمين يا أكرم الأكرمين والله spread your mercy upon us shower us with your blessings increase our knowledge grant us forgiveness and reward us with the company of the prophets in the Firdaus al-A'la. O oh Allah, forgive our parents. O oh Allah, forgive Brother Munshi's mother-in-law and the Brother Hussain Wajdi's mother. O oh Allah, we have friends and relatives who have passed away. O oh Allah, grant them your mercy. Make their graves garden from heaven and grant them the Firdaus al-A'la. O oh Allah, have your mercy upon our, the mother-in-law, our brother, Anwar. O oh Allah, remedy our sick and the grant them full and speed recovery. O oh Allah, grant your full and speed recovery to our son, Maharaj, and our brother, Khalid Azam. O oh Allah, guide our children, protect them, and make them righteous. O oh Allah, we seek from you all of the good, whether we know it or we don't. And we seek your refuge from all evil, whether we know what we don't. O oh Allah, we ask you every name you have elected for yourself, that none of us leave this gathering, but his pains have been relieved, his worries have been removed, his debts have been paid, his weaknesses have been concealed, his sins have been forgiven, and his needs have been fulfilled. Subhanallah wa bihamdi, adada khalqih wa rida nafsih wa zinat arshi wa midada kalimati. سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه ومداد كلماته سبحان الله وبحمده عدد خلقه ورضا نفسه وزينة عرشه ومداد كلماته والعصر إن الإنسان لا في خسر إلا الذين آمنوا وعملوا الصالحات وتواصوا بالحق وتواصوا بالصبر وآخر دعوانا أن الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على خير المرسلين اللهم صلي وسلم وبارك على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم Thank <laughs> you.